you stand and join us?
Good morning and welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. I'm Richard Flounder and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our service. Please join me in waving a hello to our online friends. Your presence adds to our spiritual co community and we appreciate you. Before we begin our service, let's take a moment to check our cell phones and be sure they're completely off. Thank you. We are blessed to have as your musicians today, Yvonne Hung and David Brooks. And an ensemble choir. <laughs> okay, let's take that deep cleansing breath. Just whatever's going on in the world, just take it in and let it flow out into the universe. And let's open our service by focusing our intention through our opening affirmation. Please join me in prayerfully and powerfully speaking it together three times. There is one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Let's continue by reading aloud our statement of unity. God's love is with each of us, guiding us to dynamically express our wholeness, wisdom, and abundance. We acknowledge the universal wisdom in the Christ teachings and in all spiritual paths. I now choose to open to the presence of divine love and to be changed at death. Throughout this sacred time, God is uplifting me and through my heart, the world. Our heart minister, Dwayne Beddoes, will read from Unity's Daily Word. The affirmation for today is understanding. I have had instances in my life that were aha moments, flashes of insight, when I suddenly understood a particular idea or concept, I was, it was as if a flash bulb went off and I knew what I needed to know. <coughs> Spiritual growth can be filled with these moments, deep understanding, when I know at a soul level that I am one with God. Just as a child learns to read one letter at a time, I learned more about my spiritual nature one moment at a time. Whenever or however it may occur, each glimpse of divine wisdom is an opportunity to learn and grow in spiritual understanding and faith. Every aha moments with God is part of my ongoing process of spiritual growth, leading me deeper into faith, strengthening my confidence. The meditation of my heart shall be understanding. Psalm 49.3 I open my mind and heart to new understanding. Yeah. 
I'm going to highlight a few upcoming events. The details of these and other wonderful activities are in your bulletin and on, our, and on our website. Our spiritual learning classes start tomorrow. Choose from a wide variety of classes that are uplifting and empowering. Classes are listed in today's bulletin. Circulation Day is next Saturday. Circulation Day is an opportunity to donate good items, good things in your life that are no longer serving you and send them in, circulate them to others. The items are given for free and everyone is invited to give a donation which will benefit our youth education program. Donations are 7 to 4 on, or 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Friday and Saturday morning before 9. Please join us for Circulation Day. Sign-ups on a patio for volunteers for both days are requested. Unity of Walnut Creek has reached an agreement to buy a house that is adjacent to both our parking lot and our yard. To make the purchase, we need to the approval of our membership to take out the loan. We are calling a short membership meeting after the last service on Saturday, July 24th. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday July 24th. That's next Sunday at 1 p.m. We will have information about the purchase available on our website and in the bookstore. Thank you for exploring this exciting possibility with us. What do Unity people like best? Party! Party, 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 party yes. Come join the fun at Italian Night Rocking Rigatori on Saturday, September 10th. Italian buffet, music, comedy, singing, and waiters and more. Tickets go on sale today on the patio and in the bookstore on, during the week. Genie Fusion. We have a wonderful learning opportunity coming to Unity of Walnut Creek. It's like a mini um, Unity Village. We are having the Spiritual Education and Enrichment Classes, SEE. It'll be from August 15th through 19th. We're offering wonderful classes. Uh, Eileen Gore is offering metaphysics. Um, she's coming from Southern Cal, and she teaches online for Unity Village. Linda Lowry is teaching uh, Bible interpretations, both of Jesus' teachings and the Hebrew scriptures. She's coming all the way from Detroit. And coming over the hill from San Leandro are Reverend Diana McDaniel and her husband George McDaniel. They're teaching Fillmore's Prosperity. And they were part of why we have this wonderful setting. They helped us with our prosperity. Um, the classes run from 8 a.m. to um, 9 p.m. There's one class each session. We're asking you to please sign up if you would like to order lunch and books ahead to order up to enroll by August 1st. You can enroll later than that, but that's the deadline when we will order lunches and books. If by chance you can't come to a class but you want to meet these wonderful people, they will hear, be here for your questions on Sunday, August 14th from 3 to 5. Please join us. If you're here with us for the first time, we invite you to raise your hand so we can acknowledge you. We welcome you into our, our spiritual community and we truly appreciate you being here. Ah, oh, okay. Did I see any hands? No hand. One hand, all right. Would you keep it up for a moment, please? Please keep your hand in the air while we, our ushers bring your gift of a shell lay. On that lay is an affirmation that says, just as God has a design for every shell of the sea, so God has a design for your life. I want to let everyone know that we have a new blessing which you'll see on the monitors. Please join me as we open our arms to send you a sincere blessing from our hearts as we affirm together, we love you, we bless you, and we behold the light of God shining through you. Welcome. And for our new and, and everyone else, let's greet each other.
As you sit down, wiggle around, get comfortable, take that deep breath through your heart. As you breathe out, just gently let go. As we enter into that time of prayer and meditation together, let the music be that guide that helps you journey into that center of your heart. Spirit, whole Spirit of God, infinite love, move in and through us in this sacred time. Mother, Father, God, as we turn inward and seek to know you more deeply, call us into that place where we might know our oneness with you. As we become aware of your presence enfolding us, lifting us, caring for us in every way, having set us upon this 
sacred life path. Having lifted and guided us every step along the way. Being this beauty that is our earth. From the majesty of its mountains to the power of its ocean. From the strength of the redwood to the most delicate flower, your love creates a life of goodness for each of us. A goodness that would bring forth our wholeness, wisdom, abundance, and your peace. We're so grateful. We're so grateful to awaken, to recognize your presence everywhere in our lives. As the people who bring their wisdom, their love, their care, their creative power to touch our lives in some way, we see your presence, your love, your care flowing in and through them. And beloved presence, we are so grateful that your love flows through us, your healing through our words and actions, your wisdom and light through all that we do. Gratefully, we Turn inward to that place of deep, deep peace. Resting in your presence. Feeling your peace. We enter that place of sacred silence. To simply dwell at one with you. Father God, infinite love, beloved presence, as you fill us with this light and love and life that you are, how grateful we are to have the power of choice to send this love forth, to bless, to uplift, to heal. And so together we make that choice 
and we radiate your love. First sending it to our own bodies for our healing and wholeness. Sending it to each of those that are dear to us. Blessing, healing, guiding, prospering each one. Radiating your love across this spiritual community. Touching each one and radiating into each life. We send this love across the communities in which we live, across the nation and the nations of the world to heal the fears of all peoples and to bring forth their great wisdom and compassion. And we radiate this love, sending it to all who join us in prayer, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillsides. For in seeking to know you, we are all one. We send this love to the earth, to the creatures of the earth, and to the heart of every single person. For you are that love in every heart, and in that love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And once again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world.
been waiting a long time for you two to get together and do this for us. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and, and the next piece that they play after the talk it was one that's actually created by David. So uh, that'll be a special treat. And just, wow, wonderful things happening. First of all, as I look around, I notice that everyone I see here is a volunteer. <laughs> we, we have so many folks that it takes to make this marvelous community function. And fortunately, I know it doesn't always look like we're organized, but we do have a volunteer coordinator. Vicki Berry is our volunteer coordinator. We just wanted to introduce her. She's the one you say, I want to do something. <laughs> Thank you, Vicki. And I, I love the announcement about Circulation Day. This is such fun. Let yourself come in the morning and watch. The, the children actually put this on. Now, the adults show up to give lots of help, but our kids put it on. And so what they are doing is they are modeling our spiritual principles. So we bring in those things that are really good and valuable, and we give them away for absolutely free because we know the, the more we give, the more that we receive, and it's just a flow. And so the children are here helping people when they come in, and they say, how much of that? And they look at them and say, it's for free. Now, if you want to make a donation, you can, but you don't need to. It's just for free. And people say, how much is it really? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they do a wonderful teaching role, and it's a great experience. Now, Unity has this commitment that we call practical spirituality. Okay, so I want to make sure every now and then that we're really looking at the practicality of what we're doing. So let me just check in with you for a moment. Is there anyone here that has found in that time where you're about to go to sleep that your head starts churning on something and you're going back into the things of the day and kind of worrying about them, chewing them over, rethinking them, or they show up at 3 o'clock in the morning when you wish you were asleep, or the next morning when you get up and you're about to go to today and you're still working on yesterday. Anybody have any of those things show up? Okay, so, so we're practical. Good. Okay, because I wanted to look at that today. So what, what do we do about that? Uh, and in looking at that, part of what we're really taking a hold of is something that happens as we mature as spiritual beings, as we learn more deeply how to use this spiritual power that is the true nature of our being. As we do that, we begin to make the choice, less and less will we allow the world, other people's situations, to choose our thoughts and feelings for us. Part of the power of the spiritual being is that we are able to consciously choose how we think and feel and not give the power to everything that comes along, whether it's that person, and you know who I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or the computer when it crashes. Okay, that's just stuff. And we have the power to not let that control our thoughts and feelings. So, whereas uh, the, the, the practical result may be getting a good night's sleep, the truth is, in terms of spiritual awakening and practice, it becomes very, very important. When I think of this process that I want to invite us to enter into, it takes me back to a particular teaching of Jesus that... I've gone to a number of times to seek to understand. Now, most of us are aware that Jesus spoke Aramaic. Fortunately, he used English when he typed in his iPad. <laughs> so this must be exactly what he said, or <laughs> anyhow. Any so he says, Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar... And there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. 
then come and offer your gift. Okay, first go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Now the altar is a very specific symbol. Okay, the altar is the symbol. It's the place where within ourselves we experience the presence of God. We consciously, in human form, become God aware. Okay? In, in, uh, if, you, if you look at the great cathedrals, you'll see that the altar is always at that place in their structure where the horizontal arm, which is the symbol of uh, spiritual power spreading out into the life experience, meets that vertical arm, which is the symbol of higher intelligence and consciousness entering the earth. So that is the point of the altar. altar. And it's the point where the gift is given. In other words, where I take and put something for its the purpose of it connecting me to the divine. So within ourselves, it is that place where we become consciously aware of our oneness, and we move from duality. Now my guess is, in most of those things that churn in our minds, they're pretty dualistic. The way that it works is our mind takes and when something got stimulated during the day, somebody said that thing or made that call or did, did whatever it was. And our mind says, uh-oh, that's bad. It, it, it does that emotional search, and we've got something that says, oh, that's bad. So right away, we've got good and evil. We've got duality going on. And so your mind says, I have to protect this animal because it's an animal structure. I have to protect this, this body against that bad thing. Now... So it focuses on it. And because it connects into that emotional structure that we have, it stimulates the emotional structure when it focuses on it. And then from that stimulation, we think about it more. And that stimulates the emotion some more. And then we think about it some more. And then you just keep right on chewing on it and going nowhere. So that movement, from duality to that conscious connection, where I'm one with that goodness. And there's only that goodness. That is the truth. Because God is good. All the time. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Now, all the time, including that time when that person shows up. All right, so there is, there is a very simple way of working with those things that have become stimulated in us. The way that I want to share with you is a prayer of forgiveness. Because that's what we're doing. Whatever that perception that we have there, we're choosing to release it. So we're choosing to remove the energy from it, to extend forgiveness into whatever that is that we are perceiving as that second, that second power, that which is not the presence of God's good. That place where we have said, God, you screwed up when you let that person into my life. Okay, we're saying, whoa, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm whoever you are, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it go because I have the power to let it go because I am one with that which is greater. Okay, the way of prayer is very simple. Bring that being to your awareness or the situation. God forgives you, and so do I. Very simple. God forgives you, and so do I. Now, it's the truth. God forgives you. The divine holds no sense of wrong or 
punishment in any concept towards any being at any time. It's the truth. That punishing God lives at some other church. Doesn't come in here. Because <laughs> it's not true. Okay. God forgives you. And so do I. So we make that choice. Now, I have noticed it doesn't work if I try to do it the other round. I forgive you and so does God. I need a little something stronger than that to lead. Okay, because part of what's going on is I'm in a consciousness of separation here. So I've got to take a hold of that which I can experience as greater. God forgives you and so do I. Join me. God forgives you and so do I. And then pause and feel it. Again. God forgives you and so do I. And again, God forgives you, and so do I. Okay, now, when, when using affirmative prayer, I find it helpful to make sure that I do the three repetitions, because that intention is to bring it through every part of the, of the being, spirit, mind, and body, to bring it totally into the experience within my consciousness. So that's why we do that repetition three times. Now, there's another part. It says, then come and give your gift at the altar. Now, the real gift is the intention. Okay, because it's the intention that I'm giving, the intention to enter the, into that oneness. But it involves a, uh, a gift, a sending of energy. Okay, and in this situation, the energy that I have found most effective is to send the energy of peace because it is p peace that I have given away. And the way that I get it back is to give it. So after I've gone through that step, God forgives you, and so do I. Pause. Feel it. I give you peace. I give you peace. That directing, that flow of energy, of peace, to enfold that person, that situation. God forgives you, and so do I. I give you peace. Go through the whole thing with me. God forgives you, and so do I. I give you peace. Now I want to share something with you in that experience where, where we're, we're sending that, that spiritual power and energy. We do it so many different ways. We do it in, in the many different ways that we do prayer. We do it as we did at, at the end of our uh, prayer session here where we're sending out that love, that spiritual energy to bless and touch and, and bring wholeness. But when we do this, though, I have found there's a distinction that is helpful to me when I'm simply sending that to those that are dear to me, to, to my spouse, to my children, grandchildren, those in my life that I have, I have made that choice to have a responsibility in their world. I give it without any, any thought of structure to it. It simply goes out. It's a feeling that extends from my heart that embraces them. When I am sending that to people that I have not accepted a responsibility for, I send it out in the form of a figure eight. So it goes out and enfolds them and crosses that nexus and then enfolds my being. Okay, what that does, it lets me do that sending and that creation in a way that gives me non-attachment. Okay, it lets that energy be there, fill their world without attachment to me or without my attachment to them or their outcome. Hey, again, I give you peace. I'm sending out that peaceful energy. 
send it out through that form. For some folks, this is helpful. For some, it doesn't make a bit of difference whatsoever. So your, your heart knows the right way for you to do this, but I wanted to share this because it's helpful for me. Now, I want to do it once more. But I want to go to that other person that causes difficulty in your life, that has the same name that you use. Okay, that person that you look at, I'll say you didn't do that right. Okay, you screwed up on that. Uh, you know you weren't supposed to do that. You should have. All those things we do to the self that we end up turning about that. Okay, that being that you are, that part of yourself, needs just as much the forgiveness and the peace. So I invite you to bring the awareness of that self, that part of yourself that you most like to criticize. Okay, bring him or her into your awareness. And now, join me. God forgives you, and so do I. I send you peace. Again. God forgives you, and so do I. I send you peace. And once again, God forgives you, and so do I. I send you peace. Okay. So you know what to do. Now I invite you to look. Are you willing to make a commitment to work with it every day for the next week? Okay, anybody willing to join me in that? Okay, every day for the next week. Now, what happens is, as you, as you do that, as you take, and, and for me, it's that time right before I, I go to bed, or uh, sometimes I'll call in and go, whoops, I forgot to do it, and start doing it, or, you know, I turn the TV off, or the, shut the book, or whatever it is, before, the, and look back at the day, and see what in there am I uncomfortable with? Where in there? Was I not at peace? And bring that. And then enter into that experience of forgiveness. Now, what I've what I found is that as, as I go along, some, you know, there's one or two things maybe in a day, and sometimes there's a few more. And now as I do it over a couple days, though, I notice there'll be some other things kind of come to my awareness that, uh, well, maybe. Maybe I need to add that one. And so I, I kind of end up creating a forgiveness list. And for some of us, that can be fairly extensive. And for some of us, well, you know, you've been working at it. You've been getting your list down. So, but realizing, okay, as I do this over time, I begin to create a consciousness within me of forgiveness. And if, as you do it for the week, then I would invite you to sincerely look at, will I step into doing it for a month? And at the month, would I be willing to do this for a year? Now, if you're willing to take that step, that consciousness and that flow of forgiveness and energy Builds and builds and builds. And it has an amazing effect upon your life. It's more than just a good night's sleep. Let me share with you. This is the experience of a woman who, who did this, who made the commitment to this daily practice of forgiveness. Okay, now she reported her experience to Catherine Ponder, a writer that many of us know and and deeply appreciate. And so Catherine Ponder sharing what this woman told her. 
she says, she was very honest. She said it took her a year to forgive some of the names and situations that ended up appearing on her list. Okay, so and there are some that are bigger and stronger than, than others. So that kind of makes sense. It took her a year uh, to uh, really end up forgiving some of those. But the beauty of that time is that as we open to that spiritual energy as it flows through us, it begins to heal those places in ourselves that we have to heal for complete release and forgiveness. But it proved to be the most fabulous year of her life. First, a great sense of peace enveloped her and released her from past unhappiness and judgments. A great sense of peace. Well, that's what we're, that's what we're doing. I mean, even within the day, isn't it? We're stepping into a consciousness of peace, a consciousness of release, of things within that day that were our judgments, that were unhappy. So to imagine to build that over a year, a great sense of peace enveloped her and released her from past unhappiness and judgments. Second, she was healed of a supposedly incurable health condition. Okay, that what happens when we begin to release those things within our consciousness that are our affirmations that God is not present. We begin to open for that light and its power to flow in and through us. And the nature of that divine presence is wholeness. That's all that the divine desires for you is complete wholeness and goodness. So as we open, this is a natural result of that process. Secondly, she was healed of a supposedly incurable health condition. Finally, one of the people she had just spent a year forgiving made her a gift of a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> Maybe I should read that one again. Okay. One of the people she had just spent a year forgiving made her a gift of a quarter of a million dollars. Would that be okay with you? Now, part of what happens is there is no limit to the flow of goodness in our lives except the limits that we place. God doesn't have limits for you. But it's that point where we won't let that good flow through. And we hold it in structures of not okay and separation. And as that forgiveness heals us, releases us, that beautiful support, blessing, power of abundance flows in and through us. So, I invite you. You only made a commitment for a week. Okay, now the year's out there, and you know it's out there. You can pick how far you want to go. Okay, but try it for that week. And let it touch and flow. Let that peace build, that beautiful experience of forgiveness. God forgives you. And so do I. I send you peace. Sleep well. <sighs> if you would like prayer support for challenges or celebrations, please ask our heart ministers. They will be available after service here in the sanctuary and on the patio. Our heart ministers are wearing the lavender stoles. You're also invited to place a prayer request in our prayer box by the front door or in the book center, or by selecting the prayer request button on our website. We will be praying with you throughout the week. It's time for our prosperity celebration. For love and action or credit card donations, there are envelopes provided in the back of each chair. I invite you to take your tithe or your love offering in your hand and be aware that God is the source of all good. Repeat our affirmation with me together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies 
All that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive.
Ron and David, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's bless our children together. Children, you are loved, special, and important. God loves you, and so do we. All right. And we receive these gifts, knowing that that commitment on each of our hearts to touch this world in a way that brings forth its wholeness, its beauty, and its peace is that true gift given here. In the Christ joy. Amen. Amen. So let's, uh, David, how about if we sing our, uh, all right, prayer protection, prayer protection. that's it. <laughs> our peace song. Yeah. 
are the love and the light and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun. <laughs>